Hey, it's Max Flinders. Thanks for watching Motor America on YouTube. Make sure you comment and subscribe. You're locked into the Moto America AMA FIM North American Road Race Championship. The round, Superbikes at Minnesota. Super Sport is on deck for race number two. We're at Brainerd International Raceway. And this race promises to be very interesting as we had a brand new Super Sport race winner in his career yesterday. Everyone, welcome to the broadcast booth and welcome to Brainerd, Minnesota. I'm Greg White, standing alongside two-time world champ Jason Pridmore. Now, Jason, Rocco Landers, who has won a ton of races in his career since he was 14 years old, comes out and gets a super sport win his first. Yeah, it was something that we've been expecting for a while. He's got a, a long history of a lot of wins, hasn't he? And to run away from this field by four and a half seconds yesterday was actually really dominating. And we're going to look back at his career a little bit. This is a 14-year-old Rocco Landers coming into the Moto America Championship. He would go on and dominate that championship all year long in Junior Cup, get his first Moto America Championship. The second year, he doubled up, Greg. He won the Junior Cup again, along with the Twins Cup. So he was used to winning a lot of races. And then yesterday, of course, he finally gets that first 600 Super Sport win, gets that monkey off his back a little bit. And I think for Rocco, it was just a big sigh of relief for him. I think so, because, you know, you're used to winning all those races. You come in and you dominate your very first Moto America yeah. race ever at Road Atlanta. Then all of a sudden, you're like, have a dry spell for Rocco. But it's about his family, about his crew. And when he got into victory lane yesterday, he was so excited. And he was saying, finally, finally, because, you know, when you get to that point, you expect to win. Just confirmation that he started at age 14. It was just 2019. 39 wins so far, 56 podiums, and those championships you talked about. So a little bit of a drought last year for Rocco Landers in terms of race wins and championships, but he's back to his winning ways. But Jay, if you look at the super sport field, you can't help but draw a comparison to a 17-year-old Rocco Landers to a 16-year-old Ty Scott. He's already won a super sport race in his career, and he's extremely talented, and we had a chance to talk to his crew chief about him. Robbie is crew chief to Tyler Scott, who's new to this team and new to this motorcycle. Take me through building rapport with him and, and how you've built your relationship to work so well together to make the progress you've made. Hannah, obviously the guy's got lots of talent. It doesn't take an expert to see that, you know. So I've been lucky. I've been around a long, long time. And I've worked with some older guys, really experienced guys, some younger guys. So I had that kind of feel from him. The one thing that impressed me from day one, he's got that look in his eye. I wanted to see what their eyes were doing and, and um, he impresses me. But I think he's, he's very mature. He's a deep thinker and I'm trying to let him, trying to get him to let go of that a tiny little bit, maybe back off on the intensity a tiny little bit. I still want to see that, but there's a time and place. You can't be maximum intensity 24 hours a day, three days a week, uh, with that we hear all the time. So just knowing when to be intense and when to relax, um, and, and I think we're getting there, you know, and, and it's like anybody. He's getting advice from every guy because everybody's got the best intentions. So everybody he bumps into in the paddock, hey, Tyler, hey, Tyler, Tyler, you know, so it's just trying to filter that kind of stuff. And there's some guys in this paddock who know what they're talking about. And I try and go, when that guy talks to you, you listen. Two guys in particular in this paddock, you know, so and that, that are riders. And um, I think he's learning that you know because he had some preconceived ideas about how he wants to ride how he wants the bike to be set up and i think he's now realizing stepping up from junior cup to 750 600 super sport the next progression has got to be super bike it takes a different technique a slightly different riding style and he is starting to understand that a bit better now well it's best for him to find that balance not overthink things tyler scott one to watch Definitely. That was awesome. Thank you so much, Hannah. And great insight from Robbie Peterson about the young Ty Scott. Let's take a look at the track map here, Jason. Brainerd International Raceway is two and a half miles long. Yeah, this is where this race is going to shake out. Where Rocco was great yesterday was through that fast turn one and turn two. Great first sector for him. As you get down to turn three, it's our first passing spot. We'll see some passing in four, five, six as well. Then what's new to us, Greg? Turn seven, eight, nine. A little bit more technical, all the way down into turn 12, and then out of 13 on that run to the finish line. But there was nobody near Rocco yesterday when he came out of there. It's that sector three that can create gaps. Who's going to have it? Rocco Landers off of his first win. Can he double up? We can't wait to find out. The 
we're looking forward to finding the answer to that as well. And this is one of the guys that he's going to have to deal with, who also happens to be his coach, uh, Josh Hayes, uh, one of the most accomplished motorcycle racers in North America, period. And uh, he's looking forward to this one. As we talked about, he went out in that warm-up. They were tweaking a little bit. He said, there's more in it. And uh, I plan to find it and get after him out there. And uh, I'll tell you what, um, it's going to be tough for him to catch his young protege, yeah. but... He's going to try. He's going to try. And, uh, you know, it was amazing. Josh just doing what Josh does. Going out this morning, the guy with the most amount of experience was <laughs> the guy out there putting in the most amount of laps. And uh, that's the way he's always been. And that's why his resume is, is what it is. And I think with him and this crew, they get to really look last night. And uh, I think today will be a, bit, a little bit different. He's a Josh is a competitor. He's not going to be happy with how things went down yesterday. And I would assume today, the beginning of the race, just knowing Josh, He's going to be pretty aggressive and try not to let Rocco get in the lead. And just every time Rocco's leading, he's going to keep trying to make those passes and stay in front of him and, and not let Rocco get in that rhythm and get away. And it was interesting how Josh was, I was talking about as well, that with Josh Heron, uh, when Heron was in front of him, he said Heron uh, looked a little, uh, a little squirrely. You know, he was really uh, off the bike a lot. Bike was moving around, struggling with him. He said, I got in front of him, and the next thing I know, he said, Heron suddenly came right back after me, and he said, when he got back in front of me again, he had really calmed it down and uh, was a lot, lot smoother and faster uh, as a result. So uh, interesting there as well. And uh, one thing I wanted to mention is uh, we're talking about Tyler Scott in the, in the interview uh, with, uh, with uh, Mr. Peterson. I saw one of the most impressive things I've ever seen from a, a rider, and that was at the end of the day yesterday. I was just waiting to get across the service road here into the parking area, and uh, I, was, I had to wait for like three, four cars to go by, and I look up, and that entire time, Tyler was on his bicycle, phone up to his ear, one hand on the bars, sat there like that, no feet down, just like a trials rider, just balancing for a long time. Balance like that pays dividends, I think. Yeah, you know, it just shows you kind of the athlete that he is <laughs> yeah. and the balance for a young guy. Here we see Dominic Doyle. Yesterday he had a crash, but it wasn't really his fault. His clip one snapped and oh. made him run off the track and uh, had a crash and see him qualifying so well, you know, on the second row and have this issue. So he's not going to be able to start there. Yeah, and he was quick, so hopefully we'll see him right back up and uh, able to get back into this here. And uh, we're going to find out about that in just a minute because it's time for us to send it back over to Greg and Jason. Moto America Supersport coverage is sponsored by Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series, and by GEICO where 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on your car or motorcycle insurance. Beautiful scenes from Brainerd, Minnesota. As we get ready to look at the starting grid for race number two, and it's Rocco Landers, 33-1, Josh Hayes and Ty Scott on your front row. Then we have Dominic Doyle, Josh Heron, and Corey Ventura on row two. A little further back, Soltis, Benjamin Smith, Luke Power, Grant, LaRoche, and Nassani. With Edgar Zaragoza rounding out, we had a couple of guys get hurt in practice, so as far as grid's a little bit soft here. But the racing at the front hopefully should be good. Rocco coming off his first win yesterday. See if he can back that up, G Dub. On the warm-up lap for Super Sport. As riders gonna come around right now, and they're trying to get as much heat into that tire as possible. Now, Jay, didn't you learn something about Corey Ventura as we talked about him on the Vision Wheel M4X Star Suzuki yesterday on a GSXR 600. Yeah, there was a couple things that were going on there technically that I'm not sure, you know. So I heard the team thrash though and got and got the 750, 750 back together. together. I mean, the thing is, the kid went out on a bike yesterday. He hadn't ridden, which is amazing. Then he did as well as he did, and so the team got the 750 back together for him. And I don't think he got any practice on it this morning. And we had some weather come through, like you know. So uh, yeah, we had some rain come through this morning yeah. and. And that really halted a lot of people from getting out there and ride. So Corey Ventura back on the GSXR 750, the bike he started the weekend on, filling in for 
and I, I talked to Dominic Doyle too, who's qualified fifth or fourth here on that Disrupt Racing G6R 600. He actually had a clip on brake on him yesterday going into turn five, and that's what sent him off the track. So then he was trying to get the bike slowed down and fell over in the grass, and that's what finished it off on the other side, he said. So Dom's had a little bit of bad luck because he was running with these guys, you know, the second, third, fourth place guys yesterday a little bit behind them. So we'll see if Dominic Doyle, number 25, can get a jump off that second row and get up there again with them. 16 laps scheduled for Super Sport race number two here at Brainerd International Raceway. Revs are up, and now we're going racing, and it looks like a good launch from Ty Scott on the front row, although Rocco Landers goes up the inside, trying to set the pace early, is the 17-year-old Ty Scott trying to go with him. My gosh, Josh Hayes just got swallowed up by Heron, and it looks like Corey Ventura on that 750. So now you got the Vision Wheel M4 bikes second and third behind Rocco. Rocco's gonna try to do the whole disappearing act. Heron's riding around the outside of Ventura right now. Hayes relegated back to fifth. Hayes got a good jump grade, but those guys just swallowed him up between turns one and two. And the roll speed of Rocco Landers compared to getting on the binders by Ty Scott in turn two, turn three was something else thing is is that this is exactly what Rocco has needed getting that first win under his belt yesterday is going to give him so much confidence and we've seen him do this in other classes as we stated in our pre-show uh, that he's won third class he's won it and this is what he used to do he used to get out front quickly and get away although we've seen him win a lot of different ways this is the way he likes to do it first lap Rocco Landers out front early over the bumpy goes Ty Scott trying to keep him honest and Josh Heron right there as well. So you have Landers Racing Yamaha R6, part of the older generation of motorcycle, but equipped with modern equipment. And then you have that Vision Wheel M4X Star Suzuki, the GSXR 750 with the throttle by wire system. And of course, the Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati New York Pentagali V2 of Josh Heron in tow. How about on the back of there, you see Josh Hayes in fifth. You can see Benjamin Smith who didn't have a very good run yesterday on the 88, but he has maybe found something, and he is on the back of Josh Hayes now as the front four are pulling away from fifth and sixth. Corey Ventura going up the inside of Josh Heron. He'll take over third for the moment. Meanwhile, Rocco Landers is setting the pace. Josh Heron last by time by the stripe did a 36-7, but Rocco out front, tremendous speed right now, Hannah. He does have tremendous speed, Greg, and when I asked him how comfortable the bike was for him yesterday, he said really not big changes today, just a little bit of changes to the front end for trail on the front end and a little bit more stability in the corners. Otherwise, he knows he's really strong in sector one, and he plans to utilize that to his advantage once again today to try and open that gap, settle into a rhythm, put his head down, and he's hoping to do the double. Well, you're exactly right, Hannah. He has done a really nice job through that first sector, but man, Greg, Ty Scott's trying to go with him a little bit closer today than he was yesterday. You can see Ty Scott is on a good lap right now, trying to reel the 97 back in. Corey Ventura still back there holding on to third place ahead of Heron. And then you see Ben Smith and Josh Hayes back there a little bit behind these two. But Benjamin Smith does a nice job. He's ran a really fast second and it look, looks like a good third sector here. So we've got this battle for third shaping up between four riders. There, there goes Heron. Josh Heron up the inside on Corey Ventura. So Heron will take that spot. And Ventura's got to find an answer, but Benjamin Smith lurking in fifth spot. So Heron turns around to Ventura and says, hey, let's just go. Let's try to reel these guys in. Let's not mess around with each other. Not sure Corey Ventura cares what Josh Heron has but to say. But you know what? If Corey would have just followed him through turn one, I think he would have slingshot back past him going into turn two. So he wasn't able to do that. Heron now, you can see here, he's going to look back and say, let's go forward. But Ventura puts the 24 up underneath him and then probably had to roll off quite a bit. As you can see, Benjamin Smith, it actually hurt Corey Ventura a little bit as drive through one. Benjamin Smith's going to take full advantage of that and get himself up into that fourth. Good to see the 88 fighting back here today on sec day two. Yeah, it really is good to see Ben Smith on that Northeast Cycle Outlet Racing Yamaha R6 getting after it. And it looks like Rocco Landers just goes fastest, Jay, a 133.7, but a 133.9 for Ty Scott. That's faster than, Ty than Scott qualified. 
And you know, last time through that first sector too, Scott was a lot closer than definitely than he was yesterday. Yeah, and I believe yesterday you said the lap record here is a 33.8, I believe, or 33.6. We went 33.8 yesterday. So on the second flying lap, Rocco Landers has already gone 33.7. Let's see if he gets pushed into a potential race lap record here as Benjamin Smith and Josh Heron are running third and fourth right now. And I'm sure Heron's gonna be shocked Probably thinks he's got that visual M4 bike behind him. If Benjamin Smith gets a good run through turn one. He might be the next guy that tries to take over this third place because this group back here doesn't really have enough to catch those leaders. And a Josh Heron looking good, but he also looks like he might come under fire from a couple bikes behind him. He is, and he's been looking for more in turns one and turns two specifically. He said he got a really good understanding in the race yesterday to help him improve today, hopefully, but he said he felt like he can't hold the throttle through there as long as those Yamahas without feeling like he's getting bucked up out of the seat. Otherwise, everything else feels really strong, especially through the technical stuff. He thinks that's where he'll be able to keep in touch. Yeah, but the problem is that's the fastest sector of the racetrack, and you, make, right. you make up a lot of time, fast time in fast sectors. So Heron right now, again, the, you know, the Ducati Pentagali V2 with no real electronic aids like some of these other bikes in terms of traction control and those things. So it's all up to uh, Josh Heron's right wrist. So it's Lander, Scott, Heron. Then you have Benjamin Smith, Corey Ventura, Josh Hayes is lurking right behind them. So Hayes in a position possibly to get on the podium if he can make some moves. Oh, and down goes Ty Scott. Ty Scott pushing really hard, wasn't he, Greg? And you can look at the back of that helmet. He's thumped his head a little bit there as that bike is buried under the air fence. Those guys in that battle for third are going to see that. So Ty Scott trying to unbury that machine in turn eight. Now you can see the gap. Rocco's going to come around this time. And if mom's got her hands working quick down there, he's going to get about plus three on his board rather than plus zero. Got to love the tenacity of Scott. He was pushing the issue. He did a 34 flat, Jason, this lap before he crashed. Yep. And the Greg, I'm going to be honest with you, that looks like a false neutral almost to me because he's going off with such speed. Look, like he was trying to get that bike slowed down. He's going to go right into that air fence. He didn't hit his head, but it looked like the back of his helmet sure did look like it had a thump on it. But glad to see he's okay. We get word that he's up and okay, and he's coming back in the pits as this battle for second continues to rage on. Look like Corey Ventura was getting onto the back. He went up underneath Benjamin Smith in two, and he's going to try to take a shot at Heron as they go into three. Look at Corey Ventura go. His teammates out, but now flying the flag for the Vision Wheel M4X Star Suzuki team as a fill-in rider, his second weekend in a row. And he's doing a good job with hardly any time on the CSXR 750. Corey Ventura coming off a very successful weekend on a different motorcycle in a different class, different brand of motorcycle as well in the Twins Cup category. So the team looking over Ty Scott's motorcycle, seeing if they can get, get him back out. The 16-year-old trying to get as much track time always as he can. Man, Rocco is gone 4.1 seconds up the road wearing it out 34 flat again as you look at this young man he's got a lot of confidence and he just set the his personal best split in sector two without he's, anybody pushing him yeah he's just on a rail now Corey Ventura second Heron Benjamin Smith and just looking off the back right you see Luke Power and Dominic Doyle doing their best to try to catch back up there running right around the same times as this battle as Josh Heron goes up underneath Corey Ventura and Josh Hayes is trying to get up underneath Benjamin Smith. Ben's gonna keep that position there. They don't wanna create too many gaps. But those guys will be able to get back on the back of these two up in the front. There's Corey Ventura sneaking up or trying to sneak up underneath oh, Heron in turn one. That was fast. And that's the section Hannah was talking about that Heron wanted more confidence in. But Corey Ventura filling in for Sam Lockoff, getting it done for the Vision Wheel M4X Star Suzuki team. And meanwhile, there goes Landers racing Yamaha R6, Rocco Landers. There's a good look at the gap between him and Corey Ventura, as well as Josh Heron, Warhorse HSBK racing. And then you have that Northeast Cycle Outlet racing Yamaha R6. And then there's Josh Hayes hanging back there on the N2 racing bobblehead moto Yamaha R6. His last race on it as Rocco just goes 33-7 by himself for no good reason yeah. and goes fastest lap of the race again. Again, and he's literally got six and a half seconds plus. And Would look at Ben Smith. Oh, he tries oh. to take a shot at Heron going into six. So this is good stuff from him today. You can see him trying to get up underneath him. All the while, Hayes is sitting there back there wondering how this is going to play out. We still got 11 laps to go. We do. Good roll speed from the three behind Ventura. You can see they were kind of bunching up there. Ventura's looking really strong, though, sitting in second for the moment, Hannah. 
He is, Greg, and I asked him, you know, what's different today? And he said, well, a lot. He was racing the 600 yesterday, back on the 750 today, shook some stuff down and warm up. He said he's much more comfortable on this bigger bike. He said a lot of... A lot better. Oh, it looks like Josh Heron just overtook him. But yep. Corey said direction change-wise, he's much more comfortable. But otherwise, he said he feels like he's got some good pace today. And yesterday, riding that 600 really made a difference for him and showed him some things that will help him out better today. It's working for him. But what a lunge by Heron, Jason. Yeah, he's just he's racing right now. I mean, he's got elbows out racing. And here comes Ben Smith right now. Look at Corey Ventura's to the outside. Is Ben going to be able to go up underneath? He is. Benjamin Smith, tremendous job, gets himself into that third-place spot. But what, let's just look back behind these guys a little bit, Craig. Look at that 25 is coming well, into the go. picture. <laughs> Dominic Doyle is on his way forward. 35 flat last time. He was almost a full second quicker than these guys in front. They were at 35 eights and sixes. And Dom Doyle, after he got by Luke Power, he's doing this on his own. Ooh, Heron not giving Benjamin Smith any room, but is the door open? No. So Benjamin Smith, who without question is the tallest rider in the group, and you can see from the stature just when they're sitting up how... He's trying to, the 88, get behind the bubble. He'll, he'll fall victim to Ventura. So another pass for position by the 24. And Jason, I talked to Corey Ventura about his performance in Twins Cup yesterday, as well as Super Sport. And he talked a lot about strategy. He's a rider who thinks often about race strategy, oh, how it's going to pan out. He's trying to go around the outside of Benjamin Smith. How about this, Greg? We've got that Ducati V-Twin. Got a GSX-R 750, an R6. And look at this, GSX-R 600 of Dom Doyle goes through on Hayes. Wow, just like that, Hayes lost all kinds of time. It was almost like he wasn't in the right gear, but Hayes Fires back, back underneath them. <laughs> this is some race for second spot as Rocco Landers way out front already comes across the stripe. The margin of the margin right now from first to second has gone from basically eight seconds to 8.4. A 34.9 for Rocco, a 35.3 for Josh Heron in second place. Doing that in this gaggle of riders happening behind it. Look like, it looks like now that Heron's got a little bit of breathing room, but it's this section where Heron starts to shine. I don't know, these guys seem to have each other's numbers all through this thing right now. You can see Hayes, they're all having to look back to see how many are still around. Ventura's closed that gap back down. Yeah, but see, it, it, it's that one two that Hannah was talking about that I mean, look, there's a draft. There's a side draft, yes. there's a back draft going through a corner. Jay, you've referenced it before, where this is one of the only places that you draft in a corner for yes. Brainerd International. You can see Hayes firing right back up on him, Dominic Doyle. What a cool thing for Dominic Doyle to be racing with Josh Hayes right now. And Hayes is closed up on the back of Benjamin Smith. Now, my only concern for Benjamin is just having a tire that he can keep underneath him for the entire race. And you can see now Josh Hayes is trying to squeeze up the inside of Benjamin Smith. Let's see if he makes that work. I think he's gonna too. He's, yeah, he's underneath him. I think I think Josh Hayes took that spot away. He did from Benjamin Smith. So Ben's gotta just settle down. Hopefully he's got some tire underneath him where he can try to go with the number four. Cause I think, I think Hayes is a little susceptible between turns one and two. If the 88 gets through one, okay. Might be able to get right back by him. Yeah, I mean, looking at the top speeds of the motorcycles that are in this pack, Josh Hayes has got one of the lower of the top speeds for sure, and that's in a draft. But he's able to make a lot of it on the edge of the tire and braking and where Josh Hayes is strong. But Josh Heron himself, he goes 34-9, Jay. Yeah, so yeah. Heron, Heron out front pushing his own air is doing a great job. He's found his own rhythm as the motorcycle starts to seat in. But here comes Corey Ventura. Once again, is he going to pull up side by side? He does. He just gets right around Josh Heron. Heron's going to fight right back. No room. Heron has to think about it twice, has to roll off the throttle. That creates that gap. That's for second spot. All the while, here comes Josh Hayes once again as these veterans, Josh Heron, Josh Hayes, former teammates, the factory Yamaha squad a number of years ago, they could be getting back into a battle where Heron's eyes are forward. All he's really wanting to think about and concern himself with is Corey Ventura. Correct, and that's what Josh Heron does really well. He fires back, but so does that number four. four. Hayes has been around for so long, and it's not hard to see the deficit that he's fighting right now, but look at this. Is he gonna, yeah, Josh Hayes has so much confidence around this big, long, second gear, right-hand corner, turn eight. And it's closing everybody back up again. Benjamin Smith's there, Dominic Doyle. How much did Dom use his tire to get back to that spot, though, GW? That's what I, another thing that you've got to ask yourself. As now Hayes is looking, and here comes Heron again. He's going to fire it back up underneath Corey Ventura and turn 12 again. 
Gonna make that pass stick. I think we're gonna probably see a little bit of the same thing again as Hayes oh, now Hayes. takes a shot at Corey Ventura. Oh man, Josh Hayes and Corey Ventura. Don't forget, Corey Ventura rides for Josh Hayes' wife, Melissa Paris, mm, on the MP13 it right back team. Underneath him. And gets it right back. All the while, Rocco Landers is almost 11 seconds out oh front of this gosh. group. Forgot about Rocco. He's <laughs> gone. Yeah. And this is the run that Rocco Landers can really get on. When he finds his winning ways, we've seen it before in his three championships. Oh, I thought for a second that Heron, you can see oh. Heron, he's just, I think it's the entry speed. The entry speed, you can see Heron, he's shaking his head a little bit. Yeah, I think he's getting him. a little frustrated, right? Because he needs the lines he wants to ride that Ducati as fast as possible. But that's part of racing. He's gesturing. That's exactly right. It's all it is. He's got a fight on his hands. And this has been unusual for Heron this year. He just hasn't been able to kind of get the setup that he wants. But look, he's got a huge points lead. He just wants to do the best as he can today on that, too, and get points and get out of here and then get on to Pittsburgh. I think he tested in Pittsburgh. And, and go forward, but this is a, a big battle for second, obviously, right now, as Rocco Landers just got this race to himself. Josh Heron, not sure what he did there. Oh, there was a tear off, maybe. Grab a tear off, yeah. yeah. Could've Could've been. Been. Could've a full lean angle. Yeah. There's, there's, it this been. is the gap right here. So that was Rocco Landers on the Landers Racing Yamaha R6 out of Burns, Oregon, who just went by. And there's what an 11 second gap looks like as Corey Ventura on that Vision Wheel M4X star. Suzuki falls under fire from the Warriors HSBK Racing Ducati New York of Josh Heron. All the while, Josh Hayes hanging out on that N2 Racing bobblehead moto, Yamaha R6. And again, it's about new generation or next generation and old generation motorcycles getting after it in the balance of the new look super sport look at class. Hayes. Hayes gets a run this time because of the draft again. He gets a bit of a run. He's going to try to go down the inside of Heron. He's not going to make that happen. But now he might be able to do something with Heron down here into turn three. Let's see if the four can do it. He's having a go, Greg. Yeah, so there goes Hayes up the inside of Heron. Heron doesn't have to lift, but he gives him a little bit of room. Two veterans racing very cleanly. And that's one thing that Corey Ventura has been able to come up with as well. As Hayes tries to go underneath Corey Ventura. Boy, this could get wow. dicey if these two end up in a gravel trap. Melissa's going to be very angry. <laughs> well, Josh, really, I think what he's got to do is he's got to try to lead this infield section on his own one lap. And that's what he wants to try to do. As you can see, he does have some pace through the middle of these corners. And uh, it's it's a spot now. Let's see if he goes around the outside of core here. Let's see if he attempts the four attempts to go around the outside. Oh, oh there goes Hayes. He's trying to find a way around. It's a long way around. He goes over the bump. But there's really no place to square it off right here. So he can't really do that. But there was the big attempt. And Hayes, oh, again, I think he misses the gear. gear. He did. I think it's the second time he's done that, and he yep. loses position. Heron is able to go back past Hayes, except for this time, he's not quite close enough to go up underneath Corey Ventura. So now. Oh, Hayes with a big mistake. Oh, he did make a big mistake, didn't he? Again. Ah, he's frustrated with himself. So that's Josh will put his hand up, probably say that was my fault. Well, you'll hear him say that at the end of the race. His job now to get back to those guys is going to be a lot of work, Greg, with four lap, five laps to go. And require a lot of tire. Does he have it underneath him to be able to push to close the gap? Because you can see right there in your frame, there's the number four. So now Ventura. Now this is where we're going to see what Josh Heron has because there have been some spots where Ventura's held Heron's roll speed up. Here's the oh, look yeah. at the mistakes. You're a, you caught that, GW did. He caught just a look like he just couldn't get the bike into gear. And yeah, you're going to see he's probably a little bit frustrated with himself. He's going to get his head down though. I'm going to watch his splits, watch his lap time. He's been here before. He still has, he has time. But you can see what's happened now. Corey Ventura and Josh Heron have started to gap that next little bit of group. This is what I was talking about. Heron has got some corner entry roll speed, but the GSXR 750 of Ventura seems to come off the corner a little bit better than the Ducati. And so it is that balance. How do you do the time, right? And the difference, but Heron, he needs to have clear track in front of him to do the time that he's capable of doing. And, and being controlled by Corey Ventura right now is not what Heron wants out of this race. So he's got to start fighting. Well, he's going to fight back right now to turn 12 again. Corey needs to start protecting his line into 12. He comes out of here and he moves himself back over to the right and opens that door. And Heron, every lap, is just going to do what he did. And that's what, that's what Corey's got to start to fight against a little bit. 
Now they're going to come out of here. You can see Josh Heron's probably going to be leading Ventura as we wait for those guys to come out. He does and see what happens is, is look at Hayes. Hayes has already closed up the back of Dom Doyle now. I'm looking at his lap time. He's the only one, Greg, other than the leader that goes in the 34s that time. Hayes, a 34-8, almost a full second quicker than Smith and Doyle ahead of him. And now they've closed up the gap to Heron and Corey Ventura. The only place where Heron looks like he's vulnerable is in the place he just got past between one and two or that one and two area. And of well, course, right here, he's got some torque. Look at Hayes, he's going up underneath Dom Doyle now. So he's back in the fight. Oh just like that, the four's back in the fight. But the 750's got a lot of torque, Greg, and that's what you're seeing coming off that corner. Look at Heron, really nice move there as he slides back up underneath the 24, Corey Ventura. Now he wants to try to get his head down and open up that gap, but he just can't quite open up a big enough gap. That yep. it, oh, Corey's having another look at him. He no, is, but Heron's, right Heron's got by him a little earlier in the lap, so this is gonna give Heron an opportunity to control the lines and take the roll speed and everything he needs. Of course, Ventura's kind of going to school on him. Left part of your screen, Rocco Landers, who's- He don't care about any of this. Close to 15 <laughs> seconds out front right now is yeah, Landers. He's gone. What a clinic, absolute clinic by Rocco. Boy, yeah. to get your first win and to possibly back it up by doing the double in a weekend by 15 seconds is a great wow. There's still four <laughs> laps to go. This There's thing could this could, could, 20, could be yeah, 17, 18 these seconds. These guys aren't done fighting. Now, Heron, you can see, has pulled out the smallest of gaps. He just needs to clean this left right. Harry's goes up underneath Benjamin Smith, so he ain't done with this yet. Hayes is doing everything he can to fight back. Pretty good for 47 years old, I have to say, that this guy, number four, four-time Superbike champ, still gets the motivation to get out there and race with these guys and, and coach them, teach them. And look at that gap. Heron's got a nice gap right now. Let's see how much Corey Ventura can close that down before they get to turn three. Yeah, the, definitely the easiest place for Corey to close down time is this section of the racetrack. And his bike Ventura works gets, so good. It's so too, good. He finishes it? that corner so well. It does. But he needed to be in front of Heron because you saw the gap that was created by the time they got off the front straightaway because Heron has just got so much more roll speed and control of into those corners. It's those gaps right there, Jason, that, that's the biggest difference for Josh Heron. Yeah, but the thing is, is that Corey Ventura, while well, he's worrying about Heron, he's gonna have a, a bigger problem coming up behind him with the big number four. Because I think, uh, you know, we've seen how good Hayes is in turn eight, so he's closed that gap to Ventura all the while. Like you say, Greg, Heron has pulled that gap. Like you said, he had to get through turn three leading, and he has, and I think he's pretty good through all this next section. He's gonna pull away even further Look at Josh trying to go up around the outside of Corey Ventura. Corey's not going to let that happen. But this is where Corey's got to use a little racecraft and realize that he's been passed in turn 12, like probably five times. Don't be surprised to see Josh Hayes try to do that next. All the while, left part of your screen, Professor Rocco showing us a master class on how to get around Brainerd International Raceway on a Yamaha R6 as the gap continues to increase. But Jay behind him, Heron, Ventura, Hayes, and Benjamin Smith still going at it. Yeah, 14.6, 35 1 that time, but 34 9 for Ventura, 34 8 for Hayes. And they've dropped Ben Smith and Dominic Doyle. You can still see back there in your shot, fifth and sixth place. Man, it's that tip into the turn two with Heron. And when he tips the bike in, it's like the rear moves around uncomfortably for him. And it's where he's losing most of the time in that fast section. And Hannah talked about it. That's what they were trying to improve on the bike. It looks like they've done good work, but it's not obviously 100% fixed. And the stability of that GSXR 750 and Yamaha R6 behind him is what is allowing these two riders to close right on the back of Josh Heron's number two machine. Yeah, no question. And it's, it's you know, again, there are different strengths for each one of these bikes. and. You've got three different bikes, three different brands, three different CCs of motorcycles here. So when you start to look at what's happening, you can see Heron's got a, a bit of an advantage, and this is where you'll see him stretch out. Like you can see how much Corey has to get that bike slowed down for turn eight, and the agility of the R6 of Hayes trying to go around the outside. This guy's into turn 12, and this is gonna be Rocco Landers coming to the white flag, cruising now, 34s, that's all he needs to do. That's all he needs to do. And Rocco Landers, of course, second in the championship behind Josh Heron, who's 81 points. If the race finished the way it is right now, Rocco would get another five points, and Heron's lead would be cut down to 76, which is still monstrous, considering after this race, we have only six races left. Look at the lead. Heron's done a great job. He put together a good third and fourth split, didn't he? So 
pulled away a little bit from those guys. And a 34-7-7-6 for Josh Heron. And this is the strength of the Ducati. We've talked about it yesterday. He's talked about it on podcasts and, and on, in interviews. The strength of the Ducati for him is the fact that the tire is so good at the end of the race. And you're talking about 34-7-7-6, the personal best, fastest lap of the race for Josh Heron. And he does it with one lap to go. Yeah, really nice work. Get out of here with 20 points. And he's only given, he's, you know, he's given up 10 points this week to, to Rocco Landers, but that's... All the work he has done up until that point, was it seven or eight victories so far this year for him? Now, is Josh Hayes going to do anything here that's, with Corey Ventura? That's the question is I he, have. I mean, is he is he going to is he going to lunge Corey and make Corey work up. for it? I mean, Josh Hayes is a racer. That's why he's here. It doesn't matter how old he is. He wants to race. No, if he's close enough, he's going to go for these it. These guys have been sharing a lot of dinners on the road lately. Yeah, so I understand that. We're going to be able to see here and. I think Hayes is going to line him up in turn 12 because he has seen Corey get past there a few times. He just needs, Josh needs to get out of here clean. He needs to just get as close to the back wheel of Corey Ventura as he possibly can through this left and right. And then he's got to clean this right-hander. And you can see he's got to run on him. And he's going to have to try to do something here. And you know he's going to take a shot. Here goes Hayes up the inside as Rocco Landers heads towards the checkered flag. And so Josh Hayes gets around Corey Ventura. That's for the final spot on the podium. Here they come onto the front straightaway. Rocco Landers already taking the checkered flag. Josh Heron in second spot. And it's Josh Hayes who gets Corey Ventura at the line. Wow. I mean, he just races for it, man. He just loves it. Corey he? had to earn it. Oh, Corey's going to hear about that later. But what about this guy here? He's, you think he's stoked? 13.4 seconds the margin of victory for Professor Rocco. What a clinic he just put on on how you get around this racetrack. Fastest lap of the race will be credited to Rocco Landers. A 133.719 when he was pushed back early flip. in the race. Backflip back time. Don't you think? It's backflip time? I don't I don't know. And we've seen it before. I mean, you might as well do it in your protective gear, right? Yeah. You got yeah. it on there. Is he going to take the helmet off? Oh, he I takes the he... lid off. <laughs> right part of your screen, of course, is lap progression. And you know, Jason, looking at that lap progression, who does that remind you of if you just look at Rocco? Oh, and the Czechoslovakian judge. Ow. <laughs> got to give is. that one an 8.4, Rocco. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. He got, he, had, he got his palms down. Palms down. That consistency is definitely what wins you races, and he's been consistently fast. Throwing some pucks into the crowd right now. All I'm saying is, if you looked at that progression again, it reminds me a lot of what Jake Gagne is able to do in Superbike. Yeah, there's no question. Get those fast ones done early, get the break, and then manage it from midway point of the race. So Rocco Landers playing to the crowd. You want to talk about one happy young man. After racing a season and a half in Supersport without a win, be able to do it yesterday and back it up here in Minnesota. I think we have a new favorite track for Rocco Landers without question. Yeah, no question. He was just hooked up from the beginning of the weekend. And I mean, they missed a lot of the, what was it, the second session, Greg, on Friday? Missed nearly the whole session. So late night, Friday night yep. for his team to get those breaks, break issues. They rebuilt the entire system and he rewarded his team, his pops, his family with a double victory here at BIR. The Rocco Landers, after throwing his knee pucks to the crowd, heading back to victory lane to stand on top of the podium yet again. It's Landers, Josh Heron in second spot, Josh Hayes in third, Corey Ventura, Benjamin Smith ends up in fifth, Dominic Doyle, who had a great push mid-race in sixth, Carl Sotis in seventh, ahead of Luke Power, Jared Nassani, Liam Grant, CJ LaRoche, and Tyler Scott in 12th spot. When we come back, we'll talk to Rocco and find out how that race went off of this eight and a half dismount. <laughs> While we're waiting for this, I off mic during that, you made a comment near the end of that that I want you to repeat about what kind of thrashing Rocco gave. Oh, just old-fashioned take them out to the woodshed you <laughs> know i mean beat I was... down <laughs> it was amazing uh i mean he was up by almost 15 seconds at one point finishes officially 13.4 
margin of victory. Um, and the thing was, while we were uh, just enjoying watching the race, while, while Greg and Jason were calling it, uh, our booth, we were able to look and watch them through 5 and 6 and then uh, coming through 10, 11, and up into 12. And the precision of Landers at speed every time through here was just remarkable. It was. The whole race was just remarkable. How much, I mean, you see his mom there, how excited she is. And, you know, to come in here and win a super sport race, but, you know, would have been over 15 seconds if he didn't slow down those last couple laps against two super bike champions. That's yeah. two super bike champs that he just beat by almost 15 seconds. And uh, all the stuff that he's been working on, and we've been, you know, saying it all year, especially me, but how he has to clean up those first couple laps. And, and he did that. He, he put his head down right away, uh, made that break real great. And, um, you know, I've always thought once he got his first win that he was going to go on a run. Yep, he and said I it. think he's going to go on a, quite the run, but I don't think they're all going to come this easy. No, I mean, that was just dominance once again. And, you know, you think about it, we were impressed when he won by four and a half seconds yesterday, and then he added 10, essentially, today. I mean, that's just stunning. It really is. And then, you know, he's been frustrated because the wins haven't been coming as, as quick Thank as he you. would like. And then, you know, he, he moves up a class, and Sam Lockoff gets a win before he does. You know, then Tyler mm -hmm. Scott does. And that starts to weigh on you as a, as a young rider. It starts to really weigh on you for a guy like Rocco. And to come here and do what he did today is, uh, you know, a lot of weight off his shoulders. And, uh, you know, Rocco's here now. And isn't this now his 40th win in AMA competition total? I don't know. It's a lot. Uh, in, in Moto America comp? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think he was at, at, at 39 with all his wins in Junior Cup and then in uh, Twins. So uh, just an absolutely stunning race by Rocco Landers. A great duel once again with Josh Heron uh, late in the race as the guys were talking about at that Penagali so good on, that, uh, on those tires and uh, able to roll a lot of speed through some of the key corners. And then Josh Hayes sneaking around Cody Ventura in the uh, second to the last corner. Benjamin Smith. Uh, right there in the top five, Dominic Doyle uh, was there in fifth. And, uh, you know, y you figure out how close it was, you know, throwing out Rocco Landers, Heron back to Doyle. Uh, that was a really, really good scrap. I mean, it was some two seconds covering that group. Fabulous race. And now it's about time for us to hear from the podium. With that, we'll get it back over to Greg and Jason. Rocco Landers coming back in after a great race. Margin of victory, 13.444 seconds. After Rocco cruised to a 36 flat on the last lap. Let's take a look at the results and we'll show it to you as he celebrates. And yeah, the bird's really interested in this one because it's Rocco Landers with that big margin of victory. Josh Heron was able to break away from the battle and then it was Hayes. Up the inside of Corey Ventura to hold on to that. Benjamin Smith, Doyle, Soltis, Power, and Nassani rounding out your top nine. So let's get right down to Hannah, who has our race winner. This marks Rocco Lander's 40th professional win and, of course, second in Supersport, his first Supersport double ever. Rocco, when you have such a large margin of victory like that, you've got no one chasing you and you've got no one to chase. How do you consistently click off such quick lap times at the front? I don't even know. My team worked so hard last night. They, we didn't make him that many changes. Thing was so good. I got to give it up Dunlop. Even when the tire was shagged, I could feel slides coming from a mile away. It was amazing. I, dude, thank you so much, guys. My whole team, my dad, uh, Eric, um, Nikki, Taser, uh, Dale, and you too. Josh, thank you so much, man. Dude, thanks to Darian for being out here as well for uh, helping honor her dad. Thank you, Scott. What does it mean to you to be able to do the double in his honor here this weekend? Dude, that was a, that was a, this is the best weekend of my life. Aside from Friday, obviously. I can't, I can't believe that I was able to do this honor, Scott, like this. It's amazing. I'm so happy. Uh, Mike Himmelsbach with Olin's helped us out as well, find an amazing setup. We uh, just felt on rails this entire weekend. Uh, I deserve almost none of the credit. Everything, everything goes to my team. Uh, everyone works so hard. Thanks to HJC for the awesome helmet this weekend as well. Kind of an etiquette. I like it. Quite a few weeks until Pittsburgh. Got some time. Got some time to train and to rest. What do you plan to do in the interim to hopefully carry this momentum over to that track? Well, I'm going to be doing some more fasting, <laughs> dropping some more weight, and hopefully we can do this again at Pittsburgh. Well, we'll have to wait and see, guys. All right. 
Rocco Landers. Podium interviews, some of my favorite. But yeah. Jay, I mean, no question. I love it that he's given his team so much credit, but he deserves a lot of the credit. Oh, yeah. he, he was the one twisting the throttle. Yeah, I think he's learned a lot this year. And, you know, having Josh Hayes in his corner as well, kind of uh, helping him get through some of those tough times is definitely something that's going to help this young man. Let's get back down to Hannah. Second place today goes to Josh Heron. Josh, we talked a little bit earlier today about some of the areas you didn't feel quite as strong where the Yamahas had the advantage. How were you able to capitalize on your strengths in order to overtake for this second position? Uh, guys worked really hard to, to try and get a setup that was better today, but unfortunately without the warm-up this morning, uh, dry warm-up this morning, we just weren't able to try those changes, and we made a gamble and, and went a little bit backwards. Uh, it's a bummer, but like I said yesterday, for how the weekend's gone for me to end up second here, we still got a 76-point lead. I'm uh, super happy with how the weekend is. I know I don't, I don't show it. It's because as a racer, you always want to be winning, but uh, we're just going to go do our homework. We got to really, really work on it because this is the first weekend that we've struggled and uh, we weren't able to overcome that. So um, super happy that we were able to, to be out on second, though. So just got to focus and put our heads down for Pittsburgh. We're going to go and do a we're an endurance race the weekend before. So happy about that. Me and Petrucci will be out there riding a uh, stock V2, so it should be a lot of fun. And, and uh, yeah, excited for the next one. You've done a lot of laps on track with Josh Hayes, racing against him, being teammates with him, but you had kind of a new competitor out there in Corey Ventura. How was that battling with him? Well, <laughs> he was doing good, but if I'm being honest, that bike was uh, getting me on the straights today, and it was it was hard, man. I was I was losing a second a lap being behind him, and no matter what I tried to do, block pass and run a little bit wide, I just I couldn't keep him behind me for more than a lap until there at the end, and we were able to get a really big gap. So. Uh, I don't know what was going on, but but uh, the power was hurting us today. I think Josh would say the same thing. It was, I saw him go by. I'm like, all right, let's see where he can get him. So uh, maybe I can learn a little bit, see where a good place pass him was, and neither one of us could do it. So um, yeah, he did, he did a good race though. It was nice seeing somebody different up there. So had a good time today. Had a good time this weekend. Thank you to Brainer. Thank you to all the fans for coming out. Ended up being great weather, and uh, yeah, excited to move on. With six races in the season left, you have quite a substantial lead in the standings. Is that something you're thinking about, knowing that these other riders are out here, hopefully trying to cut into that? Yeah, for sure. No matter what anybody says, you're always thinking about it, right? Um, and when you have a big lead, uh, Petrucci said earlier in a, in a team dinner, you know, he said uh, when you're doing good, those are the times that you need to focus even more and, and make sure that you keep that lead. So that's why I'm disappointed. I know we only lost five points, but it's... Uh, you know, we put a lot of work in to get there. So just got to thank the entire Warhorse, HSBK, Ducati New York team. Uh, thank you to Fresh and Lean, OnlyFans, Cardo, Arai Helmets, Alpine Stars, everybody for helping out, everybody that's out here. Thanks, Josh. Guys. Well, you know, looking at that, I mean, I mean he's right, though, actually, isn't he? The more, the more, the, the larger lead you have, the more you have to stay focused. Yeah, and I, I, you know, he's got experience, though. I think that when you're, if you're younger, that could be the case. But he had some adversity this week that he had to fight off. And, uh, you know, they just weren't quite able to get him as comfortable as he would have liked to have been. But uh, they'll learn from that for next year. All right, let's get right back down to Hannah. Third place today goes to Josh Hayes. Josh, you got shuffled back there a little bit right off the start. How were you able to make your way forward through the field? Ah, oh, man, N2 gave me a, a quite a good weapon, you know, and the whole time I was out there, uh, especially in those last, I made a few mistakes, I dropped back, you know, once we were in that battle, and I dropped back and I go, man, like, I gotta, I gotta get the old El Toro here, Kevin, what would he do, you know, and just keep fighting, and uh, fortunately, I was able to get myself in some good positions and make just the right passes. If I'd had to do another lap, I don't know, it would have been a roll of the dice. I don't know if I could have done it again, but we made it work for the checkered flag. I'm really excited about that, and man, what a barn burner of a race. I had so much fun, uh, other than my own personal mistakes, you know, battling with Corey, Ben, Dominic, Josh, like, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun seeing kind of how everybody works, what they're thinking while they're out on the racetrack, and uh, man, I just love racing, so that was a fun one for me. Now, you have a very special relationship with Corey Ventura. He's essentially a part of your family and rider for your wife's team, and he was coming off a win earlier this weekend. So how do you kind of manage the risk there and, and when and where to overtake him? Hey, we're racing. We're not dancing, right? So <laughs> sorry, little buddy, but uh, I told you, anytime you beat me, I promise you, you earned it. You get nothing for free. So <laughs> I'm going to make him ready. Poor Melissa, she's like, man, you just made it a long three weeks till the next one. So <laughs> That's going to be an uncomfortable car ride, huh? Nah, he'll he'll suck it up. He'll be all right. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. Congrats. Yeah, and, and Josh Hayes goes back to not being a fan favorite of the Vision Wheel M4X Star Suzuki team yeah. either, right? <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Look, he's going to go back to Corey and say, listen, 
this this move happened to you plenty of times in the race last lap you can't leave the door open for a guy like this or anybody for that matter on the last lap with two corners to go that's the lesson that josh hayes is going to tell Corey ventura about and uh like you said nothing's going to be given away for free <laughs> so rocco landers that's making some moves now heading towards the top step of the podium with Let's his well, Patriots, right? I mean, you look at his, he's got to stand on the podium with his riding coach. It's unbelievable. And of course, the guy he's battling with in the championship. Our coverage will continue when we return to Brainerd International Raceway from Supersport. And as the podium celebrations commence and Josh Hayes gets up there from a guy, me, who loves dancing, I love that we're not racing. You know, we're not dancing. We're racing out here. And uh, he was going to go after it and earn it. And I loved a line that, uh, that Greg White used near the end of that race where he said, this has been an absolutely phenomenal race for a second. Uh, Rocco owned it. Oh, yeah, Rocco definitely. I mean, he checked out, and this race was over pretty early, and for him just to do those consistent laps, and even when he was just cruising around, he was still pulling a half a second a lap. So, uh, you know, Rocco did great. Like I said, he's, you know, he's talking about fasting to, to lose more weight before the next race. He's worked hard on his diet and his fitness over the last couple of years and really, you know, got that under control and, and showing that commitment. And... Uh, you know that stuff is tough and it was and it's cool to see all that work that he's put in it finally paid off he's been wondering you know god i'm doing all this work and I, you know i'm not getting any better well when it clicks it clicks and this weekend it all worked out but uh, you know he's gonna keep charging though keep digging because pittsburgh they're gonna be coming for him it's not gonna be this easy well absolutely and let's take a look at the uh, points now at the conclusion of this one and it's still obviously very much uh, all Josh Heron still up by 76 points but uh, Rocco now has given himself a lot more of a breather back to Tyler Scott who had that unfortunate off Kevin Omedo obviously absent uh, and then Benjamin Smith rounding out the top five here uh, this is all still Josh Heron's to win and or lose really uh, but Rocco Landers is starting to deliver uh, a serious statement yeah he's starting to distance himself you know from from Tyler Scott and I think the biggest thing for for Rocco now is just to keep trying to race with with Josh Heron keep trying to race with guys like Josh Hayes and just build that experience build that knowledge uh, keep uh, keep improving you know there's still stuff he can work on like he's been working on the beginning of the races this year and that finally come together and keep trying to put some more wins together and uh, just keep learning well, and I, I think the other telling moment to me in this one was we know the talent, obviously, of Tyler Scott. And Rocco's pace was so quick that Tyler just crashed trying to stay with him. I mean, that just says something about where Rocco was. This yeah, weekend. and also it was cool to see Tyler do what he did. It looks like he made a mistake and caught a false neutral. But he was riding really well. And, mm -hmm. you know, when you're a rookie like he is, those mistakes are going to come. They're going to come. You learn from them, and uh, you figure out how to deal with them. And there's, uh, there's no question about some of the talent here in this in this group from this young group that are coming up. This is going to be really, really fun for the rest of the year and into the future, no question. And to wrap things up here for the Moto America uh, Superbike class, let's get uh, – excuse me, <laughs> Super Sport class, let's get back over to Greg and Jason to wrap things up. Moto America Supersport coverage is sponsored by Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. Welcome back, podium celebrations. Jason Pridmore, the combined age on that podium is 86 years. 86 years. <laughs> With Rocco being only 17 of them. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you where the majority of that is coming from. <laughs> Let's get right back down to Hannah. I'm here with Tom Halverson of Yamaha. Tom, you're pretty involved in Rocco Landers' program, helping him out where you can and when you can. What do you think of this star on the rise and the success that he's having in the Super Sport class this season? You know, I'm so I'm so proud of Rocco for getting the double win here. He's finally shown what he, what he can do. Um, of course, Josh Hayes in his corner doesn't hurt at all. But, um, you know, I, I love his whole family and his whole effort, everyone behind him. And the kid has so much talent. And he's so, uh, uh, he's just aggressive. He's got everything in a racer you want. But, uh, you know, of course, he's had some growth to go through, too. He still has some to go through. But to see him take this step and win this weekend was huge. And I'm, I'm just so proud of the whole organization and Rocco as well. 
What does the potential future look like for Rocco Landers within the Yamaha family as far as racing is concerned? Is there a super bike ride in his future someday? You know, that, that's really tough. It's a, it's a big step, but I think guys like Rocco, you know, they, they need to do that pretty soon, whether it's through Stock 1000 or jump right in, but it's, it's very hard with the amount of rides there are right now. But um, I think he's one of the kids that could jump in there and take a few years to learn and definitely be one of the next rising stars for sure. Well, Rocco Landers is certainly one to watch. Thank you so much, Tom. Guys. All right, yeah, and, and Tom brings up a lot of good points, JP. Let's take a look at race two highlights. Here you go, Greg, and Rocco Landers got a good start, and that was kind of it. He's gone. The battle for seconds, the one that we're going to talk about a lot here, as you can see Rocco stretching this lead out. Ty Scott did go with him, didn't he, Greg, for a little bit until making a small mistake and crashing down there in turn number eight. You can see this battle, though, was raging, and here's the mistake. Ty Scott pretty lucky here, I feel, Greg, to walk away from that one as he... Ventura kept on going up underneath Heron out of that last corner, getting by him, and then this is the spot where Corey was getting passed back by Heron, lap after lap, and they kept fighting, and Hayes is there, Benjamin Smith is back there, and look, Dominic Doyle was a long way back at one point. He showed his strengths today as well, but Josh Heron got to that front. There's the battle for third going into the last corner. Hayes goes up underneath Corey Ventura in that same spot. Rocco's gonna win this race. Heron does his championship some good and continues to lead by 76 points. He finished second, Josh Hayes third. And Josh Hayes, not done yet. He's gonna beat the last two races with a different team, but here's a look at the points. Josh Heron talked about it. He had 81, he now has 76 with six races remaining. And keep in mind, Jay, that six races represents, what are we talking about here? 150 points That's total right. yeah. for, for the front. So, look, Josh Heron, he's in control of this championship. But I do understand when he's talking about, look, I want to just dominate. I want to win. I want to not have to worry about anybody getting any points at me. Yeah, he feels like he should win every race. And that's just the way it's going to be for him. And they just missed the setup a little bit this week. And that's all it is. And he'll come back here hopefully next year with a little bit better package underneath him if he does stay on this motorcycle again. And they'll learn from this. But Josh Heron also knows he's been around long enough to understand that when somebody as talented as Rocco Landers starts to figure out how to race, how to win races on a super sport machine, he could get on a fierce roll. Well, that'll do it for us for Super Sport. For Hannah and Jason, I'm Greg. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time when we bring you great race action as we continue to get closer and closer to crowning the 2022 Super Sport Champion.